it seems I have a knitting situation. <laughs> so I am knitting the Lavender Vintage sweater. I'm knitting it in the DK rather than the four ply that it would be knit in. And I'm also knitting it in the round. You may be thinking, Tina, it looks good, it fits. Yes, it does. And I thought all was good. Let's sit down and I'll tell you what isn't good. <laughs> oh yeah, have another look before we... Oh yes, I did go longer. I said I wanted to go longer because it's very short in the pattern. I want to wear it with jeans, so I've just taken it that bit further. It's slipping down actually, but yeah. So it's a better length for me. So let's sit down and I'll talk you through the numbers. Okay, so I thought I was following the numbers on the pattern but in a bigger gauge, larger needles, DK weight. So it would fit me because this is only for 32 to 34 inch chest. I'm about 38 at the moment. So I wanted it to be bigger to accommodate. And um, yeah, so I thought I was gonna follow the same numbers so that I could use those numbers instead of trying to work it out all the rest of it when it gets complicated. And then I realised, <laughs> because there's, as I said, there's a front and there's a back piece, I thought the numbers were the same because on where you cast on the back, it says cast on 109, and where you cast on the front, it says cast on 109. What I didn't realise was over the page, after the ribbing, it says, Increase row, per eight, P-T-I-N, repeat, something, P-T-I-N, what's that then? So I looked in the abbreviations and it's purl twice into the next stitch, so front and back of the next stitch. So you've actually increasing and so it goes up from 109 stitches to 121. Well, I didn't do that. And I thought, did I miss that on the original? So I read it through about three times where it started. No, I didn't miss it. It's just, I think it's allowing for the boobage. Because <laughs> obviously you're a bit bigger in the front than you are in the back, generally. Not always. We're all built differently. Some people have a broader back than they do at the front. So I'm quite small framed in that area, sort of round, just under the bust. I'm quite small framed there. So, um, yes, the numbers weren't adding up. So, as you can see, I've got all these pencil marks. I've been working out what I can do. And so what I've done is I have got, now I have divided up. So I've done my last round of this one before I start going backwards and forwards, just doing the back first. So I've got less stitches at the back. And so I'm going to miss off the first decreases because I need to come in for the armholes. So I'm gonna miss those first decreases until I'm down to the right stitch count and then carry on as I'm supposed to at the back. And then I've got more stitches on the front. And once again, I do less decreases. Well, I do the decreases when I've got to the right amount and then carry it on. So hopefully it's going to work. As I said in the last video, I am a bit worried about how much I'm going to have because I'm only down here. I've got all this to do for the body and then I've got the sleeves and I worried about running out of yarn so um, we shall see once I've done the body then I'm going to do both sleeves at the same time so if I do run my well, legs no, it's bottom up we won't talk about that or worry about that at the moment <laughs> let's just get the body sorted but we're okay at the moment it fits doesn't it it fits and so if I do the decreases the num if I stick with the numbers it's supposed to be, 
I'm confident it's going to fit. It is a snugger fit, but it's a vintage one, so I didn't want it all baggy, and that's not how it's meant to be. So I didn't really want negative ease, but I don't really want a lot of positive ease either. So we shall see how I catch on, how it carries on. So I shall come back and report back when I've started doing the back. So yeah, fingers crossed, wish me luck. It's time to pack away the winter knits and to bring out the summer knits. So let's open the old suitcase to put them all in. So what have we got? First of all, we have the stag Christmas sweater that went away, then came back out again <laughs> because it turned cold again. <laughs> so this is the Drops Silver Stag sweater. Love it. I knit it in Drops Charisma. That's got to go back in there. Sorry, did I? If you haven't seen it before. Love this sweater. It will be back next year. Well, the end of this year. Definitely. Next one is the Petite Knit slip over chunky knit in the wool warehouse create yarn i did a video dedicated to this one i'm going to miss this one because i've worn this one a lot and this is definitely coming out later in the year as well lovely and soft and cozy really nice to just throw over anything i've even got like um bought lamb's wool jumpers thin jumpers that I'd like tie to fit in and I put this over the top of that and it works really well so yeah definitely want more slip overs in my life that's that one next one I knit this year this is the chunky dahlia dahlia <laughs> and so yeah earlier in the year I knit this one out of can't remember I really need to have notes on these, don't I? This was Stylecraft Life, I'm sure of it. So yeah, another um, acrylic one because I wanted it to be easy wash because I do tend to get food down myself quite a lot. <laughs> so yeah, I'm not the... I do get messy, so I do like to wash my sweaters quite a lot, so yes. Love this colour, really enjoyed wearing it. Looking forward to wearing that one again later in the year. Then this one, I knit this one beginning of the year. There's a theme here, isn't there, that I knit these this year. And the reason for that is I've grown a bit over the past couple of years and a lot of my knits have gone to the charity shop because I used to prefer closer knitted things, tighter things with like neg negative, well, not negative, but so they fit, no positive ease. But my style has changed and my body shape's changed. And so because both of them have changed, it's like, no, I really don't like these anymore. So yeah, I am sort of not starting from scratch, but a lot of these are recent knits that are my favourites. This is another favourite. This is the flax, but I just used two different colours and just did my own little colour work thing of just knitting one colour one, one colour of the other. And so it gave it a different look. I also knit it out of Drops Melody, which they call a chunky, but it works up fine in this pattern anyway as an Aran. So I love that. And I might make another one of these next year, sort of later in the year, because it is so comfortable and squishy to wear. Love it. And then next one, this is a, it's called Vintage Memories. It's a free pattern. I've loved this pattern. I've knit others in this pattern. And this is my favourite one. It's knit in King Cole Merino 
and I love it and it was tight around here and I managed to like pull it out and sort of re-block it a bit and so it does fit so it doesn't because it was this neck was coming up as it does sometimes when you've got a yoke if it's too tight it tends to ride up and I've managed to stop that happening but it's still because it does fit fit I like a looser fit now so really I'm not I like how it looks on but I'm not pulling it out of the wardrobe because I'm not feeling as comfortable as I do in the others so I'm going to keep it in case it fits better the end of summer as if <laughs> But with all the salads and beating out gardening and things, perhaps something will change and it'll feel more comfortable at the end of the year. We shall see. If I don't wear it this winter, then I'm going to have to give it away because it'd be a shame though, because I really love that one. I don't want to let that go. But if I'm not wearing it, I would have kept it out. That's the thing that I might have kept it out in my wardrobe now but I know I'm not wearing it, so yeah, that may have to go, we shall see. So what have I brought out to go into the wardrobe? Not a lot. <laughs> so the only two that have stayed the course that I'm still loving is this little one. And I can't remember, I'll have to link my Ravelry because I think it's, I haven't put anything on Ravelry for years, but I've had this one for years, so it is on there. And this is just a little four-ply fingering weight cardigan and it is knit in Skein Queen, Skein Queen, you know, like a raspberry colour and I really love it. But I haven't worn it as much as I want to because, once again, it's that very close fitting. So I would wear it in the evening with like a nice dress, just like as a cover up. But generally in the day, it's not something I go to. But I can't let it go because I love it so much. So it's hard to show because it's edge to edge. So it's got a nice edge to it. And there's no buttons. But it is just that cropped little cardigan that is useful in the summer. So I would like to make another four ply, thin, three quarter length sleeve cropped cardigan to replace this one. Because I just don't get the wear out of it. Likewise, I've got this one. This is Untangling Knots. She doesn't, all of she's... I don't know what's happened, but she's not, her patterns aren't available anymore. So she's decided she's taking all her patterns off, which is a real shame because I love her patterns. They're very vintage inspired, which was what I was very much into. Fantasy Tina wears all vintage things and it's all fitted and dresses and stuff. Real life Tina wears baggy jumpers and jeans. <laughs> <laughs> and I've finally come to the fact that yes that is what I'm comfortable in that is what I wear that is my life <laughs> so yes it's very cropped it's got the lace at the top it is knit in I think it's Cascade 220 it's a Aran weight or worsted weight um, sweater so it is quite thick but it is actually very useful and I have worn this quite a bit and feel really nice in it but it is that little bit too tight for my liking now it's just a little bit restrictive you know when it looks okay and other people say yeah it looks like it fits it looks nice but then yourself it's like when you go to move I think it's probably because I'm used to looser things now that when you go to move you just feel you're just aware of what you've you're aware of what you're wearing <laughs> and I like to just forget about what I'm wearing and get on with my day I don't want to think about it I just want to be comfortable so this is I don't know why I put that in there <laughs> this is coming out for the summer because I would like to wear it 
but I really do need to knit some more comfortable summer cardigans really is what I need in the wardrobe and that is part of why I like to take out my winter things and just have what I'm wearing in that season in that part of the wardrobe so that when I actually open the door I can see what I've got so I can think oh I'm not wearing it, I haven't been wearing that, why haven't I been wearing it, what can I do to make wear it or should it just not be in the wardrobe cluttering it up anymore. So I'm hoping by doing this, because I I like to think I've nearly finished those sweaters, it's just so next time I choose what I'm going to be making, I make a choice so I'm actually building my knitwear wardrobe instead of just because I'm a, what's it called, process and a product knitter. I like both. So I love the process of knitting, but I also want the product to be something I would buy in a shop that I would to wear. It's not a piece of art, it's a piece of clothing that I actually want to get a lot of use out of. So I have got some yarn already I bought at the Alley Pally. So I did pick up this, which is a nice summery colour. It's DK, it's merino wool, which a lot of people will be saying, but it's summer. Yes, this is an English summer. <laughs> so um, my original thoughts was I've only got 250 grams because I was going to wet, but I was going to make one of the slipovers so that I could just put it over t-shirts or a long sleeve t-shirt or whatever like that. So that will probably be, it won't be enough for a cardigan anyway, so I probably will stick to that. So I need to refine what pattern I'm going to have for that. So I can have a sl shorter sleeve, but have that bit of extra warmth when I want it in the mornings or later on at night. So that is going to be something that I will be knitted. I've also got a lot of um, cotton yarn. <laughs> That I bought last year that I was making a vest top but then I decided that I wouldn't knit I wouldn't wear a knitted vest top that's because I kept on seeing lovely ones all over the place and I thought yes I like that idea yes I'll make that and I was knitting it in the sunshine and I really got quite far on it and I thought I would not it's a nice sunny day but I would not wear this on a day like today but then I wouldn't wear it any other time because it's a vest up. It's not got any sort of like arms or anything. So I need to figure out what I'm going to do with that cotton as well. So I shall be returning to that maybe next week and thinking about what I'm going to do and actually have an, get an order or something planned for what those things are going to be. So I'm ready to cast on and I know I've got the needles ready as well. So yes. This is going away, unfortunately, till about September time, and then I will be glad to see them again. But for the meantime, I am taking out, well at the moment I've been wearing one, two, three, four, five things have sometimes been coming out, and I've only got two things that I don't really wear. <laughs> so that hasn't worked out very well, has it? So definitely lots of garment knitting to come in the future. I just want to say thank you to everyone who wished the bride and the wedding well on Saturday. It was my stepdaughter's wedding and it was the most beautiful day. It was the best day. We had a fantastic time. Everything went smoothly. It did rain all through the wedding <laughs> and into the evening. But luckily it was at a hotel in the Orangery, so it was very light in there for the photos, but it just had such a nice feel about it. And we all stayed dry, so that was amazing. <laughs> the bride looked gorgeous, as did Gary. He was walking her down the aisle. The dress was amazing. Isn't that the best part of a wedding, seeing the dress? <laughs> you may have noticed I have a rather large arrangement of flowers next to me. Kirsten kindly brought them over on Sunday, no Monday, um, from the table arrangements. And yes, they're lovely. Gary calls these pampamoose, pampas grass. 
and he kept on, I don't know if he was rubbing himself on them or what, but he kept on getting it covered on his suit on the day. We all kept on brushing him down. But yeah, they really are beautiful flowers. Um, my, what I like the most, I don't know if you can see these, I'll pluck one out. These little bunny tails. They're so cute. So yes, love those. It's got some white roses in there and hydrangeas. And that was like the theme of the wedding, these flowers, big, beautiful flowers. Luckily, um, it's a friend. It's actually my flowers from my wedding were made by Mandy, the same lady. So if you're in my local area, if you're in Northamptonshire, Oxfordshire borders, and you want some a fantastic florist, let me know because Mandy is the best. <laughs> A lot of people wanted to know what I was wearing. I was wearing a dress by Roman. I haven't got very good pictures of it just yet because we've got unofficial pictures and there was lots of photos being taken properly so I didn't take many photos at all. Um, but I've, my dress is from Roman and I was really comfortable. It's a really lovely dress. I think it's a really good place to go if you want an occasion outfit. I've never actually bought from there before. I've seen dresses I like there, but I've never actually been in the shop and bought there, but I heard it's a really good place if you go into a wedding, and it was. And they've got the lovely, like, straight, like, slip dresses, if you like those. My hips don't go near that. <laughs> I did try one on, and the lady said, yes, yeah, you'll be fine, you're not that hippie. Yes, I was that hippie. <laughs> so I went for something a bit more flared. I've got it here so I can show it. Oh. So it's got an open part at the back. I liked this gold work on it. So it's got gold on the fabric and then it's pleated on the skirt, which gives more room and um, yeah, jagged hem. But yeah, I felt really comfortable and the prices are really good as well in there, I think for the quality and it's machine washable. So it means that it can be worn Sort of on occasions, I can see me wearing this on holiday as well to go out with like flat sandals, dog walking. <laughs> so yes, I'm going to stop recording now because somebody's about to walk past. I have an update on two sweaters for you. So the first of all, the vintage um, rainbow, <laughs> that's the one, the vintage rainbow sweater. And so I was just trying to sort out those armholes. So I have got the right stitch count now. This is the back. And I'm just about to start that, what they call the welts, that cream part at the top now. So it comes round. It's hard to show at the moment, but yeah, that's the front. And that's the piece I've done for the back, going up that back section. So I think I'm back on course, it all seemed to go well, but because I was doing a bit of fudging yesterday, um, I put it away after dinner last night and moved on to my Lady February sweater. So this is one I started before. I'm knitting this in Starcraft Aran. And so it's a ragland at the top and it has three buttons. So before I'd already done the garter stitch. It's just in acrylic this one. So garter stitch at the top, split for the sleeves and then you've got this lace but it's much it was much better for watching tv because it's only a four row repeat two of those rows are pearl rows it's a free pattern on ravelry and it's very repetitive i've got all my stitch markers at the bottom to keep me on track and yeah it's quite an easy tv knit because all I'm doing at the moment is just going straight down. So I need to measure to see how long I want it because in the um, pattern, it just says to stop 
about an inch and a half, I think it was. Let's have a look. Um, yeah, stop an inch and a half before the desired length for doing the garter stitch band at the bottom. So I need to measure something that's the right length so that I can decide what length I want it. So I don't know if I'll be doing this, knitting on this this evening or going back and knitting on the rainbow. It depends where I am after dinner really. Then I'll decide if there's a lot of decreases and I'm very much following the pattern, then I shall leave that for tomorrow and pick this up again. So yeah, so that is going well. I would like to just carry on with this now. <laughs> I want to do the other one because I'm enjoying the other one, but I love the rhythm of this one. It's really nice. And I think it'd be a nice cardigan to wear. And I don't think it's going to take me too long. So part of me just wants to knit on this. So I might knit on this in the evenings and knit on the other one in the daytime to get some progress on both of them. So yeah, I don't know. I'll have a look now and see how long I want it and see how far I've got to go. I've decided to go down to 14 inches. It's hard, isn't it, to make a decision? And you don't know how far under the arm it's going to start, how loose it's going to be. But I'd rather it be a little bit longer than too short. So I'm thinking 14 inches. So I've written it on the pattern because otherwise I forget. So this is only about six inches. <laughs> So I've got a long way to go. So yeah, I want 14 and I'm up to six. <laughs> Less than halfway. So I shall carry on with that, I think, tonight. I shall do some more of the rainbow sweater now, cup of tea. And then after dinner, I shall carry on with the lady, February lady sweater. So I shall catch up to you when I've made some progress. In the last, a quick catch up on the cross stitch. In the last video, I said I wanted to do the uh, long dog sampler for, do the horse for the coronation. Well, I did do some stitching while watching the coronation. Really love the coronation, by the way. Um, but I didn't get to the horse as always. It just looks like a little bit to finish on the page and then it takes forever. So I did finish that page off. So I did here, but um, fortunately I didn't start the other page. So I was thinking, shall I do that next page or shall I do something else? And I thought, actually, I want to go back to my um, Mirabilia, the spring topiary garden. So that is what I'm going to be pulling out. I haven't had time to do any of that so far, but hopefully if I set it up all ready to go, I will manage to get some stitches in. So I shall show you of any progress that I make on that. We are going to the woods to see if the bluebells are still there. So I don't know if we've missed them but we shall give it a go. This is really hard one handed. <laughs> but first, let's have a look at the geraniums. So last year, I put these in the garage to overwinter. You might remember that. And this one survived. And that one survived. And there's a very one that doesn't look like it's going to survive in the back. But that's all that survived. The ones in the paper bags didn't like it at all. They just went mouldy. But these ones survived okay. So it's hoping we get a lot of big hands. are still looking beautiful. Well done girls, well done. It's just started to rain, so not good timing on my part. This is the maternity ward <laughs> for the local sheep. 
There is a little black one just there and then a couple more over there but they've grown a lot already. So yeah that is the maternity ward of our village <laughs> and here they come. <laughs> I don't know how much you can see those, but there's a whole pack of feisty little ones running around the field. No parental guidance at all. You see him springing across the field. We are in luck, my friends. We are in luck. Bluebells. The advantage of walking in the rain, in the mud, <laughs> is there's no one else around and we can just enjoy the bluebells on our own. Unfortunately they do look like they've gone over slightly but they are still beautiful. feed the soul. It changes from a grey sky kind of day to a blue sky kind of day. Just in a good 10 to 15 minutes. I've decided that I'm going to stitch on the spring topiary garden next. So I've set it all up in my frame. The chart comes as a top section and a bottom section. So I've just about finished the top section apart from the wing. So I am going to start work on the last wing on the right hand side. So I've got it all set up. I like to use a needle minder to hold my chart where I need it. This needle minder was just one I made from just an old pair of earrings. So I have just used one of the earrings. So you just have a magnet on the back and then you have like another magnet the other side which is this is put on like a button and so wait for the click and it's gone <laughs> so it just literally clicks together holds the fabric and anything in between and that means that your needle Let's just put this on properly. It means that when you're working and you need to put your needle down instead of poking into the fabric. I mean, I must admit, I do put it in the side, the grime guard a lot, but it just means I can just connect it to the needle minder as well. So yes, I'm going to have a little stitch on that and I'm going to try and carry on stitching and not change up this project until I have that wing complete. So a lot of hours stitching, not going to be done today, 
but I'll make a start today. I've finished this section of the wing. It's worth pointing out that I forgot this little tip part here is actually missing on the chart on both sides. And I actually added it on. I don't want to show too much of the chart, but I added it on, facilitated it on on that part, but then I've lost the other part, which wasn't very good. So I went onto the website and I have just been doing it off of the phone. So I have finished off that tip. So now I need to go on to the main part. So I get to play with the Karen water lilies. And these are silks. So they're the posher yarns, yarns, threads. <laughs> um, usually using the DMC, that's usually cotton. But these, as I said, are the silks and they're variegated. So I'm going to be using some of these. So I'm going to start off with this colour. Now, what happens a bit? I haven't been looking after these very well, I admit. So usually I take a longer length and fold it over. But with these ones, because of the different colours you get with them, you want to just have, instead of folding it over, you want to have just one long length. So I don't want to go too long, but it doesn't look that variegated. So I'm going to have to take it quite far so I get some variegation. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to take two strands of it, making sure I keep it up the same way. So I've got the colour variation going the same. I need to just attach it at the back and then start off. So I am going to start off up here, I think. I prefer to do a loop start, but you can't when using two separate threads. So where do I start? Just about here. Also, when doing it like this, it means that instead of going all the way along and coming back, I need to do one stitch at a time. Otherwise, I will lose that variegation. So I'm going to carry on stitching this now. So this will make it. So this will make it a bit prettier. Some nice colours rather than that grey. Please excuse the crazy wet hair, the no makeup. We're all friends here, it's fine. I was excited to show you. I've finished the back. This is the back, but I can't. <laughs> so I thought I'd just do it this way. I wanted to just check to make sure I had, well, first of all, to see how long it was now that I've come to the top and also to make sure that this distance was okay to actually get my arm in for the sleeve. So yes, it's worked out fine at the moment. So really pleased with that. So this, as I say, it's less stitches on the back and then there's more stitches on the front. So whereas it's pulling in more here, when I turn it around, turn around, turn around, sorry. <laughs> when I turn it around, you see, that's why it was gaping at the back more because there's more stitches, so obviously, where the boobs are, it's got that more room there. So yes, it's all working out nicely. So tonight I will be carrying on doing the front section, doing those, um, well, no, yes, this afternoon I'll be doing that part. And then I probably won't get on to the white bit tonight because that took quite a long time because obviously I need to, 
I need to do some more fudging to get the numbers right for the arm so I can get the right stitch count. So when it comes to the decreasing for the neck and the shaping of up here, then it's going to actually match up. I'm not gonna have too many stitches or too few. So yes, very pleased. I love the look of it. I love the colors. Very excited. Just the only thing on my mind at the moment is having enough yarn for the sleeves in this one. I, I know I've got enough yarn in the cream, but um, yeah, I wish it was top down so I can get the actual that part done first because then you can just go as long as you want to, can't you, when you're on the straight. But, I mean, I could reverse engineer it. I need to have a look at the pattern and see, perhaps I can rewrite it in the other order so I can start it at the top and work my way down because that would be better for my yarn control to make sure I've got enough yarn and then I can just finish the colour work the same on both sides where the yarn finishes or I might end up having extra. I know what I'm like but I've still got sort of a few that section to do on the back, on the front sorry. So um, yes we shall see, carry on making it up as we go along but we're getting away with it at the moment, getting away with it which is the best we can ask for. <laughs> So here she is on Mimi, so that's how it's going to look at the back properly and then if I spin it round that's how it's looking at the front so I just need to go up that front part so shaping for the armholes that's the next part Hopefully you can see the variegation there. So on there, the two Karen water lilies are tangerine, which is the orangey pink one. And then there's also Bordeaux, which doesn't come across quite so well, but it is like plummy, purpley colors. So yes, loving stitching with those, but I'm gonna have to leave it there. But I am going to carry on with this until I've finished the wing and then I shall move on to a different project. But at the moment, it would just be nice to finish that wing off and then I can have a new page start on the second part of the chart. I have finished all the decreasing for the armholes. So now I'm knitting straight until I get to that cream part at the top. So this is very easy to do now because I'm just knit three and then you just slip that one that makes the ears. So yeah, a nice relaxing knit. I thought I had gone wrong. Because I've been doing it in the round and things and so I was automatically changing it so that I was, I just did all knit when I was doing it in the round and now I've gone on to knit and purl because I'm going backwards and forwards. And then it occurred to me that in the pattern on a purl row it was saying knit, like knit together for the decreases. And I thought, oh no, it's not supposed to be garter, is it? Is that why I couldn't get my gauge before? So I went on to Ravelry and sort of made the pictures bigger so I could see to see what other people had done. And it's definitely knit stitch. But I think it's, I'm sure that vintage patterns, they just mean knit as in stockinette. So they just assume you know when to purl. So they don't say knit a row, purl a row, they just say knit it because you're knitting <laughs> I think I'm right in saying that so yes I am just carrying on knitting this 
and keep going changing my colours every four rows. I have been knitting away on my Lady February cardigan and it's looking good. This is how it looks. So you can't, if I hold that back, can you see more of the lace? Not very well. <laughs> but yes, it's actually looking like a cardigan now. So I am working on this lace piece down here. I really like these hangers, by the way. These like furry flock, is it called? Because they do hang on to things really well. Things don't slip off so easily. So anyway, get back to it. So let's have a measure because it's not growing as fast as I want it to. But then when you think, when you do it in the round, there's a lot of knitting, isn't there? There's a lot of stitches, but it is Aran weight. So I've got my unicorn tape measure. <laughs> so I want 15, 15, 14 inches is how long I want it before I start doing ribbing. So let's see what we've got. Obviously this is not going to be very accurate to see it on my lap, but for the purposes of the video, I shall try it. Seven inches. <laughs> so I'm halfway, really, to how much I want it. So yeah. Oh, I'm disappointed you can't see the lace. Let me see it better. Yeah, you can see the colour better because it is a really nice blue. It's like a nice, rich, deep blue, but you can see it's blue. It's not one of those black blues. I haven't got the ball band to tell you exactly what colour. I'll tell you next time because the rest of it's downstairs. But yes, I'm looking forward to that being finished. Looking forward to wearing it. Um, I need it in my wardrobe at the moment. Now I've sorted out the other sweaters. I'm looking very light on hand knits and I'm still going to need them because it's sunny today but very windy so it's still not so nice out there. So yes I'm going to carry on knitting on this and we shall see where we are when I catch up with you next week. So thank you so much for watching I really appreciate it and have a lovely week and I'll see you on next Sunday. Bye for now.